and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. And of course, this is the show where we bring you where the action is. Bit of a lumpy week this past week, but we are going to dig right in because lots of themes are beginning as well as continuing to emerge. Take a look at the agenda. First up, we will take a look at the broader markets and of course beyond. We're going to dig behind there and see what exactly is taking place. Beyond that, we're going to take a look at earnings related base breakouts as well as downtrend reversals. Earnings reports for the third quarter are certainly picking up quite a bit. So lots going on there. And then Wall Street upgrades into earnings reports that are coming out further next week into the following two weeks. And this exercise can be really quite productive because a lot of these Wall Street firms will not put out upgrades directly before earnings unless they have some sort of intel. And it does prove to be one of several key pinpoints that can help you get in front of these stocks right before or directly after they report their earnings, very much up to your style of investing. And then one area of cyclical stocks that is really showing superior outperformance. We'll take a look at that and some of the underlying stocks. And then also building your watch list as the markets hit a new high in price. Certainly the Dow closed the week at a new high, but this particular period in time is really ideal to get together that watch list and we'll dig into that as well. Also, some of the highlighted news from this past week, we did see industrial production falling in September, but we also did get uh, strong earnings reports. And I mentioned this, a lot of companies coming in 80% so far are coming in ahead of estimates on both sales and earnings. We did see jobless claims reach a pandemic low. This is good news. However, we do have a labor shortage, which is unfortunately pointing to higher inflation. From there, we did see today on Friday, Fed Chair Powell did come out and talks and comments and mention that he does see inflation lasting potentially longer than initially thought. And this is not what the markets wanted to hear. A little bit of choppiness here as we close out the week. Next week, we do get some relevant information relating to inflation as we get core inflation later in the week. Uh, Consumer confidence as well as consumer sentiment will also come out next week. This has been impactful in the past. And then durable goods orders are those supply chain issues impacting orders. And that will also be reported next week. So let's go ahead and take a look at the broader markets. And here we are with the daily view of the S&P 500. And you can see that we just closed a hair below the recent high, but we're awfully close to a new high in price this week. The indexes were up about one and a half percent. Your outside momentum indicators, that would be your RSI here and your stochastics, both in positive territory. We're having these secondary bullish confirmation moves with the shorter term 10 day crossing up above the 50 day. That is a golden cross uh, confirming the current uptrend in the broader market. So from here, let's take a look at some of those underlying sectors in the S&P 500. So we're looking at a two month daily price chart of the 11 sectors in the S&P 500. I've gone ahead and added this RSI, that relative strength indicator, sorted it in descending order. As always, we want to uncover where that strength is in the markets, of course, with an eye toward participating and capitalizing on that strength. So a theme that we've been highlighting here over the last five plus weeks, energy and financials remain up here in the forefront. We did see energy prices increase. And then also uh, we'll talk more about financials and where the strength is there. And moving on, a consumer discretionary 
did hit a new high this week. Let's take a look. And this is despite Amazon's difficulty, it did sell off today. So there are some bright spots that are taking place. There's one name in particular, a heavyweight stock, uh, Tesla subscribers to my MEM Edge report will know all about it. But that's certainly one of the drivers. We will get into some of the other areas in discretionary as well. One area that has been perking up and it reversed its downtrend this week, and that is real estate. This is going to be REIT stocks. I'm going to share a couple of names there. And then also, as we continue to move on, industrials, this is that cyclical area that I talked about. So we're going to look at some names there. And one last area before we move on with these sectors is healthcare. And this is an area that I've really been keying in on just waiting for this reversal because take a look, this area had had a significant move. Again, my MEM Edge report subscribers will know we had a number of medical product stocks that really outperformed the markets before falling out of favor. So on the lookout for this nice downtrend reversal, this is what I mentioned as far as building your watch list you want to be able to take advantage when this group turns. A number of these stocks are getting set to report their earnings, and that's going to be the driver to really help bring those growthier names in healthcare back into favor. We saw it with Abbott and a couple of other names uh, this week. So let's go ahead from here and drill down a bit further behind those sectors, again, with an eye toward where the strength is. And I have populated this particular candle glance two-month daily price view with a number of ETFs that are really quite helpful as far as helping get your arms around the markets, what's taking place. So I have uh, Brent crude oil pricing, the yield on the 10-year, uh, we have regional banks, semiconductors, software, and so on. So again, descending order. We want to see where that strength is and take a look. No big surprise here. This is KRE, that S&P 500 regional banking ETF. And this particular area is all about uh, not only rising interest rates, we'll take a quick look at that, but also earnings. These guys are coming out with great numbers, lots to do with improved lending numbers, and then also improved profit margins relative to that. So lots of vibrancy still in a confirmed uptrend. Don't think that you missed it. This is an area that we've been uh, on top of with my report and a lot more upside in my estimation there. Brent crude up here uh, edging up at that 85 level, continuing to help those oil stocks gain. Let's take a quick look at that 10-year yield as it inches higher. It closed the week at about 1.67. This area, we want to keep an eye on this prior peak here because this is when the brakes were put on uh, tech stocks when we hit that 1.75 area, but higher yields helping certainly those bank stocks. Software, this is an area that we talked about last week where it, down, it reversed its downtrend ahead of the broader markets. Uh, last Thursday, turning constructive software was first out of the gate. You want to see that as a leadership group. And then as we continue to move down, there is one other area within tech that did turn bullish this week, and that is semiconductor stocks. Not with a lot of oomph. It's very, very selective. And again, within here, there are three sub-industry groupings within semiconductors, and there is one area in particular that is able to outperform, and it's not the equipment guys. So you'll want to drill down further. Those looking to participate, uh, or certainly my report will drill down into that for you. And then again, another one last area. I know I said it before, but this is IHI, and it's, it's the U.S. Medical Devices ETF. This is where those high growth names in healthcare are going to emanate from. So if you're inclined, dig in, take a look at those stocks in IHI. It's an area that I have a number of names on my watch list for these downtrend reversal plays. I'm going to start this segment with an area I mentioned I'd review, and that is stocks that have broken out of bases on earnings. For those of you that follow me closely, my work, you'll know that earnings 
and strong earnings are a big driver as far as those names that I'm going to be gravitated toward. And when you see a stock break out of a base following strong earnings, that can often be your beginning of a very nice uptrend. So here we're taking a look at Tesla. They did come out with their numbers. We can see that it has subsequently broken out of this very lengthy base to new highs. So this is a 10 month base breakout. It occurred on very big volume and the stock has certainly been in a very nice confirmed uptrend poised to go ahead and trade higher. From here, let's take a look at a couple of other stocks that reported earnings this week and subsequently had nice base breakouts. This is SP, SCP Pool, P-O-O-L, and this had been a big winner on my MEM Edge report. It's all about individuals keeping their home, upgrading it, putting pools in, and the stock really fell out of bed back here with a number of names in that early September period. But this week, they came out with numbers that were 63% year-over-year earnings. Big spike here, but the stock had a subsequent base breakout. Your MACD just now turning positive with your positive RSI. You can use historical precedent on this prior quarterly release here where the stock continued to advance higher. So when you see this nice base breakout on volume on earnings, it can be really quite constructive. Another name that came out with numbers, and this name, it's not this week, there was another stock in this group, however, that did. This is United Healthcare UNH Managed Care, just more for an educational because it did report the prior week. And we can see we had this nice gap up, big volume, causing a base breakout. The stock has been able to add to that with your momentum indicators in positive territory. So let's take a look at another name that did report this week in the same industry group. And this is very common. You'll see this where names continue within a particular industry group to have that similar dynamic base breakout. This is Anthem, A-N-T-M. They came out with 62% year-over-year earnings growth. Subsequent to that, there were eight Wall Street upgrades following this report. And we can see that nice base breakout, big volume in a nice confirmed uptrend. Next area I'm going to share with you that did come out with strong numbers. Uh, this is a name. This was not last week, but this was the prior week, JBHT. This is a stock that I added to that MEM Edge report right after this gap up on earnings because, again, base breakout, big volume, and you can see how it's trended higher quite nicely since then. The company did report 59% year-over-year earnings. It's trading at about 196. Uh, Wall Street is calling for 216 on the price target. They did get an upgrade this week. So this is the area in cyclicals that I did want to point out to you, and it is transportation stocks. So let's just take a quick look at the transportation index so I can share with you what is taking place. This is the Dow Jones Transportation Average Index. You can see it's been in a nice uptrend. This first gap up here was all about J.B. Hunt. Subsequent to that, we've seen a number of trucker and rail stocks continuing to trend higher, and that's really quite constructive. It is a cyclical area, but it is a nice broadening out that we are seeing. Let's take a look at another a couple of other transports that did come out with earnings. This is Canadian uh, National CNI gap up base breakout. So you're going to see a lot of the same themes. Came in 40% above estimates. So we can see it's just lots of volume, pretty uh, healthy, powerful move here. Although it is overbought, you're going to want to use historical precedent really with any of these names as your guide. And then a name that also came out this week that helped JBHT's uh, move is Knight Swift, another trucker, KNX, a little, uh, quite a little sloppier, but same concept. Base breakout, big volume, powering higher, 59% year-over-year earnings, uh, 
and another where we are seeing the estimates being revised higher. Last name, and this is a company that is due to report next week, a trucking company, uh, SAIA. This company had a base breakout going in to earnings. Yesterday, they did receive a price target upgrade, and that is bullish, certainly going into their earnings report. A couple of other names that we can take a quick look at just to confirm this move into the transports, and that is Union Pacific rail stock, another rail stock CSX, also exhibiting clear outperformance. For those of you not inclined to participate with an individual name, you can use an ETF IYT comes to mind. This is a transportation ETF, and you can see it's mirroring that Dow Jones uh, Industrial Transportation Average. That's another ETF, of course, as well. So from here, I am going to take a look at some of these turnarounds on earnings. These could be really interesting because potentially further upside once they break above resistance following strong earnings. First up here is Seagate Technology, STX. They came in with numbers that were 153% year-over-year earnings growth, 62% above estimates. So let's take a look at some of the other dynamics here with Seagate. We can see that it's broken above each of these areas of resistance. Nice volume. We did get that black line up through the red. That's bullish momentum on that MACD and your RSI is positive. Now, I will tell you, I would be more interested if STX closed the day in the upper reaches of its trading range, uh, simply because that would imply, or certainly improve the odds for further upside. But of course, tech did fizzle a bit into the close today. Higher inflation, not great for technology. Let's take a look at another downtrend reversal name, this is HPQ. HP is the ticker symbol, and we can see it broke back above this 200-day simple moving average. Management came out, guided higher going forward. They also raised their dividend. Nice volume on that downtrend reversal break. Another name where, again, more convincing if we were able to close in that upper portion of the trading range on the day. However, your RSI and MACD are in a fine, uh, upstanding position. From here, I want to share with you some REIT stocks. And I mentioned at the beginning of the show that these real estate stocks have been on the move. So a couple of names, not quite ready in my book for prime time, but this particular name, but there are others. This is Crown Castle. CCI is the ticker. The company did come out with uh, numbers. Management talked about robust tower leasing. These guys are all about rolling out 5G and they uh, lease these uh, communication towers. And the company also raised their dividend as well as their outlook for 2022. But take a look. We're now above this 200-day simple moving average. Your next area of upside resistance is at about 184. That's that 50-day simple moving average. Again, historical precedent can be your guide as you're on the lookout for the stock to break above each of these areas of resistance. Your RSI is positive and you had that nice bullish MACD crossover, but still a little bit of upside potential resistance there with that 50-day. Another name that we can look at here in the reach space, also all about 5G-related towers, is SBA Communications. It's SBAC. The company is due for their earnings November 1st. However, they did receive analyst upgrades this week, a little bit closer to potentially breaking above that 50-day simple moving average. Your RSI is positive. And then we are getting that nice bullish black line up through the red. That's your nice uh, crossover there. So from here, I did mention that we were going to take a look at companies that this week did receive upgrades going into the release of their earnings. And more for your watch list if you're not inclined to buy stocks going into earnings. So we can begin by taking a look at eBay. 
and we can see a big move today up six percent caused the stock to break out of a base nice volume characteristics and this actually uh, the target price I'm looking at it but it's actually past the target price but more importantly is the fact that we did see this base breakout big volume outside momentum indicators constructive going into the release of their earnings on Wednesday. Next week's a pretty big week. At the end of the show, I'll talk to you about some of the other big names that are due to report uh, next week that can really move the markets. Another upgrade going into earnings, ResMed, RMD. They're due to report next Thursday. This is in line with that reversal potential taking place in a number of healthcare stocks. So earnings might be the driver here. They're due to report next Thursday. And we can see the stock had this nice MACD black line up through the red, bullish crossover, and then RSI trending upward. So when you see a stock get into an oversold position and it enters into that RSI that's positive the upside move can really be uh, quite substantial so certainly one for my watch list because the fact that the stock had been a big winner from this june into september period tells me that the company has high growth potential and then high upside potential as well another name this is in energy and it's all about goldman sachs giving it an upgrade this is kotira energy ctra and uh they did upgrade the stock this week and actually today so it was up two and a half percent on the day a little sloppy here but again you can see it's had this ability to have a big upside move it's broken back above all areas of resistance and I'd like to see that MACD crossover to confirm but you have a nice positive RSI and then from here, a couple of other REIT stocks. These guys are due to report uh, this particular company, Invitation Homes. They are due to report on Wednesday, and they did receive a price target upgrade into earnings of $50. And INVH is currently trading at about $41. they are due to report on Wednesday. And the company is the largest leaser of homes. They have a portfolio a large part portfolio of homes that they in turn lease again another one that has that really nice upside potential another REIT stock that we can take a look at they're not due to report until early November but they're also it's American homes they provide leasing rental actually of single family homes and we can see this week it in fact today it broke back above that 50 day you have nice RSI heading upward, nice volume characteristics. So keep this one on your radar as well. And then one last name that we can take a look at that did receive an upgrade. And I was also going to share with you where you can get that information because most of these upgrades I'm sharing with you took place today. So we'll quickly digress to that in just a minute. This is Penumbra, P-E-N, diabetes related stock. And today they received a price target upgrade to $350. And the company is due to report in early November, potentially forming the nice right side of this base. So from here, I did want to share one of many areas where you can get that daily upgrade downgrade information. We're looking here at Market Watch. This is today, upgrades and downgrades. You can then sort that. Here's CTRA, a couple of the other stocks that we covered here today, AMH, INVH. And from here, of course, you will want to go further and take a look as far as when their earnings are due. Are they coming up? But again, uh, very vibrant. We are in a period we are, where we are seeing positive reactions when the estimates get revised upward and likewise when estimates get revised downward. So it takes only a moment, but really well worth taking a look at. So from here, what I did want to do is just take a very quick moment and share with you What's taking place among sectors? And this is really exciting to me. It's, again, something I'm very much keen in on. We can begin by taking a look at what the sectors have been doing over the last 
four weeks. And we can see over that past four weeks, it's been all about energy and financial stocks. And again, those are subscribers to my MEM Edge report will know that we have been all over this. We have a number of winning stocks that are still in very confirmed uptrends. But let's go ahead and drill down. Take a look at what is occurring certainly over the past five trading days. And from here, we can see financials still very much up here in the forefront, far outpacing the broader markets. We did talk about REIT stocks coming into play, but here we are with the healthcare sector. So this is what I'm on the prowl for as far as stocks in there. But this is also one way that you can get in front of sector rotation, drill out, look at over the past four weeks, and then now over the past week, are we seeing any kind of shift taking place? And as we close out the show, I want to remind you, if you like what you've heard, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, for those of you that haven't already, I have a special offer below for you to trial my bi-weekly MEM Edge report for four weeks, a special offer. And then lastly, wanted to remind you as far as earnings next week, a lot of big companies, Amazon, Google, Facebook are each reporting. Caterpillar will be reporting their numbers as well as Lockheed Martin and a number of other defense related stocks. So be on the lookout. Everyone have a great weekend and I will see you next Friday. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.